wait then. Can you guys keep it down for a little bit? Sorry, we're shooting a documentary <laughs> called The Vlog. <laughs> the vlogs are documentaries though. That's true. I, now having, having done a couple vlogs, I'm like, dude, vlogging is literally you're shooting a documentary. Yep. There's no difference. That's true. There literally is no difference. commercial okay. so what were you saying I was just saying so everyone's like really amazed which I get that like it's amazing seeing humans do like almost superhuman things I get that but I don't understand how like like a whole country can get like so involved and so like deeply passionate about the Olympics that part I, I kind of don't get and I think it's because I don't even understand the reason why people are fanatics with sports in the first place. Mm. So that right there is just um, that just goes over my head. Do you know? I know I know why I like to watch certain things. There's the there's the whole country thing that the political aspect, which you, you know you're proud of your country, you're proud of representing with whatnot. But I mean I don't really see that as much. For me, it's kind of like taking what I like about watching movies. You learn stuff from movies. You learn what the characters kind of go through when yeah. you're watching a movie or a documentary or a TV show. And I like taking what I learned from that and reapplying it to myself, or just having it inspire me or motivate me to improve my life. And so when you're watching sports like the Olympics, especially the Olympics, it's like you, there's these characters, these people, these athletes come out of the woodworks. You know, you never hear about them before the Olympics, you know, like they don't make the headlines until they get to the Olympics. And when they make it there, especially like the lesser known sports, the lesser known. Exactly. And like you hear their backstory because they, they, they go in, 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 in deep with like, you know, like how they grew up, how they got into the sport in the, in the beginning and how when they first start started showing like promising attributes to be an a athlete. They show you all that when they're competing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they, they there's they, backstories. There's, there's like it's mini awesome. documentaries before the actual events and it's stuff. So they go deep into like uh, why they're doing this, how they're doing it, what makes them so special, why they're number one, why they're number two, and why they, why this rivalry between these two uh, you know, athletes are so important that they have to win. <laughs> but, I know. But yeah, but because of that though, like it showcases the, a lot of the, the, the human spirit to win and the human spirit to prevail and and they endure, you know, and I feel like that in itself, besides the, the whole political aspect of the different countries coming together, I think there's something very human about competing in sports that makes you feel like you can be inspired by it. One of the most like well-known stories um, is of Michael Phelps, how he was diagnosed with ADD and ADHD as a young kid. And uh, one of the, I think his PE teacher, someone was telling him, hey, like, maybe you can take your son, he was talking to the mom, you can take uh, Michael Phelps to go swim it off, because all they're going to do is swim for like three hours a day. So they're like, all right, well, I guess if he has so much energy, we might as well swim it off. And he ends up being the best swimmer that ever lived. So it's like stories like that that's inspiring. It's almost like the most like underdog story ever. Exactly. You hear about the guy that's kicking around a tumbleweed that later becomes like the best soccer player that ever lived. I think it's that. And then you add that. So that's at the personal level. And then they have that at the national level. So just recently this weekend, um, I was eating with uh, one of Nadim's friends. And he's close friends with a lot of Olympians. And um, he was saying that... Uh, for the Olympics, obviously, like if you're a well-known first world country, there's like extreme like qualifying standards. You have to make it at the local level, the state level, the national level, and then you represent your country at the Olympics. But he says, uh, when you're a small country that no one's ever heard of, the Olympic Committee gives you this thing called a white card. So when you have a white card, you're you're allowed to enter your country and your uh, one of your athletes regardless of what their standard is. So for example, if like the qualifying standard for the 100 meter sprint is like 10 seconds, um, your athlete doesn't have have to compute compete that. Like he he could just have maybe like something super slow, like 15 seconds, which is like any high schooler will pretty much dust that. But the point of that is to help a developing country gain some momentum and confidence. So like if you apply to the Olympic Committee and you're like, hey, we're trying to develop this sport in my country and we actually want to make this a big thing. We're developing athletes, they're slow as fuck right now, but one day we'll, we'll come in and make it. They'll give you a white card and they'll let them, um, what is it called, compete. Yeah and, he was, yeah, and he was telling me about this one specific country. It was a country I never even heard of. It was called like the, the like the service islands or some shit like that it was some weird ass country and there's a guy that was over 200 pounds and he snatched under his weight so in weightlifting like 200 pounds snatched that's a girl weight that's what girls do and this guy is over 200 he's like 250 
and that's how much he snatched. But because he was able to compete on the white card, now when he goes back to his home country, it motivates all the kids to go, oh, you know what, one day I can also achieve greatness, even though they don't know that he only lifted the weights of a girl. So it's like that true underdog story from on a personal level and at a national level. Yeah. Yeah, because like, because like I don't, I didn't really see all of that. Uh, Hearing about like Brazil and like the Zika and like how it's like dirty. It's horrible there right now. Right now, I'm like, yeah. why would anyone even go? I was like, if I had tickets to that, I'd, I'd get my money back. But I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I guess Brazil is one of the worst places to have the Olympics right now, though. Yeah. Especially right now, for sure. I, I heard some Olympians got robbed already. There's like 10 of them that got robbed. And some guys already got sick. And one of them got kidnapped for saying that, that Brazil is really bad right now or something. Oh, he kidnapped and they got forced to like uh, go to an ATM and actually yeah. draw money to give to their robbers. That's like, fucking crazy. Two different ATMs. Crazy. Are you going to be in the Olympics? No, no. Uh, What's your favorite sport right now? Swimming? Swimming? Are you going to be the next Michael Phelps? Phelps. I try. Awesome. <laughs> you know who he is? We were just trying to show you right now he's swimming. He's amazing. <laughs> oh, no, that's that's Michael something else. He, he's good at something else, not swimming. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows what he's good at. Are we, uh, Explain it? Okay, uh, guys. This one we said what? It was guys versus girls, right? Yeah, this is, this right, is girls, boys versus attention. girls. Okay, uh, so this is gestures, everybody. Okay. Guess the gesture, right? Bad words. And so, uh, this is the slate. It's basically charades. Oh, it's like Hollywood. Charades. They're basically <laughs> like charades. Um, these are your point cards. So, in difficulty, this is easy cards, medium cards, hard cards. Got it. But, um,. You can you can pretty much draw. You're not gonna know what you're gonna get. So let's say I can draw a hard card. Uh, this is the word like shuffle, right? And then I'm gonna draw like a medium card and maybe like an easy card and a medium card. So I guess what you pick is entirely up to you. You could pick like four hard cards, like four medium cards, four easy cards. So everyone gets mix, four cards uh, and mix them around. Yeah, the whoever is no. Not everyone, just, just not everyone, oh. just everyone. Just the person who is uh, doing the, the actions, right? Yeah. And then the rules apply to the same like charades, like no mouthing words, no sounds, uh, none of that pussy yeah. shit that you can that you can't do during charades. Fuck that pussy Fuck shit. That pussy shit. <laughs> so uh, the catch about this is that there's a timer. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna put this down, right? This is the timer, and this is how you start every game. Oh, it's a toaster okay? oven. So the thing about this game, there's uh, numbers on here. Oh crap. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right? And so each one, you have 15 seconds to uh, act out and for your team to guess. That's p right. 15 So you kind of want to be strategic in the way that you place your cards. Because this one's going to fall in the first 15 seconds. This one's going to fall in the first 30 seconds, 45, and then you have a minute. Pretty much to guess that one. Oh. Yeah. You want to put the hard one in the minute one? You want to put the yeah. You want to put the hard one like last. Like okay. let's say or like in the beginning because you can do it. Oh, <laughs> that's true. If you can do it, like this word is like milk, right? Okay. That's Have more confidence. Whatever. In Chop. Them. That's pretty freaking easy. Everybody can get that. Supplies. Well, so you can look at the, the, the. We have to look at them to guess. Yeah. No, no. Um. So when you're picking them, can you look at? whatever words you want to pick, or is it just whatever comes in next, and then you just have to pick that card. So for example, mm -hmm. you have to get the next one that follows here, opposed yeah. to me choosing the words that I want. Right, Okay. right. But you can choose the words that you want upside down. Got it. Because there's well, two if, words like that. What if I choose like all easy cards then? Then you Am only I get you only required get to one, choose a hard one? Then you only get one point. It's based oh, on all hard cards. Points, I see, yeah. I see. yeah, so pretty much hard cards are worth I do all hard. three points. <laughs> yeah, but that's it's high risk, high reward yeah. for that. That's how I live my life. Yeah, Pumps. medium, two. $200. But yeah, some some of these are really uh, difficult. Like one of the hard cards is like electricity. Oh. Like, oh, I don't know how you're supposed to do that. But you know, like be creative. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, oh. Oh. oh, you gotta make sounds. Oh. 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 <laughs> yeah, I guess so. yeah, be creative, be creative. Yeah, so this timer is pretty loud, so this is how you begin can you do the game. something like this? <laughs> I don't think you can point to anything, right? Because that's, that's considered props. Because that's considered props, right? That's, that's considered using props. props. No props. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, so we no can't use props. props. No, no props. Let's, let's just say no props. Yeah. Pretend yeah. it. Yeah. Pretend All it mine. in the air. All yeah. mine. All mine. Yeah. Okay, so, so you draw, you're basically trying to get your team to guess what you're acting? Right, is that what right, it is? Right. Okay. So here, here's how you play, right? 
So let's say that we're gonna begin. Okay, ready, set, go. Time to begin. And then I'm doing this, right? Drop, so okay, dropping. so the way you get points is you pick the card out once the team uh, guesses, guesses it, it, right? If you're unable to act out a word and the card drops, you don't get those points. Oh, oh that's so cool. like that. And then the next, next one, next one, and then like yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. China. Oh, oh, I can't get that. Paper, square. Oh. Surprise! Yeah, oh, Russians! Yeah. And so, I got three points. Mm. That's it. These are the points that you didn't get. Gotcha. And that's discarded. Yeah. These are discarded. That stays with your, your team. Got right. it. Right. What was your favorite JK party game you played so far? So far, I think the favorite game that we played was Gestures, only because I haven't played it yet. And yeah. I think it was super funny that one, everyone was just kind of like holding everything in just because we didn't want to be too loud so that our neighbors next door don't complain. So that was kind of already fun because we're all like, mm. yeah. Um, and then two was, so the way this game works, it's like it looks like a, a film slate. So you know when they go, and they go, action! Yeah. So it's one of those. So um, you pick four cards, three categories, easy, medium, small. Out of those three categories, you pick four cards. Each uh, each level, I guess, easy, medium, hard, they're worth like different points. And so, of course, us being as competitive as we are, we pick the hardest because that means it's more points if we get it right. And then you put it in the slate thing. And what happens is you have a minute. I felt like it was less than a minute, but you have a minute to give your group clues and um, each card is like stood up, right? So it's like this, and 15 minutes go up, and then that card disappears. And then you move on to the next card, and then after another 15 minutes, that card disappears, so on and so forth, right? So when we would try to, we would finally like, have our group guess what the clue was right, and we're like, yes, we got it! And then by the time you go, and you, you have to get the card out before it falls, that card would disappear, and you're like, oh, shit! And then you have to try to move in, so I think, just that, like, trying to talk really fast while still trying to get the card so you get the point, and, like, that kept fucking us up. And there were a couple where, when we were trying to grab it, like, it just slipped right through our fingers. And it that happened so up, many times. It was so funny, because I'm like, yeah, you got it right. And then I went to go grab it, and then it slipped from my fingers, and it fell right in, so we didn't get any of the points. I think that's another twist that I actually like about that versus charades, is because you don't, you don't, just because you got it right doesn't mean you got it right. You have to move yeah. fast enough to make sure it doesn't go away. Yeah, and it's hard because you're so proud of your team and you feel so accomplished that you want to do a little victory dance but that little victory dance is what fucks you up because you're like cost you. yes and you're like oh no i lost the card so that was really fun um yeah i think that's what i really liked we played mafia again and that's always fun but i always get like a like a mild panic attack before they pass off the cards because i'm always like oh i don't want to be mafia i don't want to be mafia me I neither i hate being mafia you're mafia twice i know the first time i got it, i was like fuck all right i'll get it over with and then afterwards, I'm not going to get it. And the second time we play, I'm like, fuck, god damn it. I hate being mafia. You're so good, though. Am I really? Tell me tell me more. Tell me more. I mean, you're really good, but because it's you and I know all of your No, no, no. Tales, tell me. Tell me how, how, how am I good? Tell me. Tell me. What, what do I really do? You're really good. Like, you're really good logically. So you can, in your head, you're not mafia. So it becomes such a truth to you that now you're getting offended. And it comes off as you're getting offended when someone's accusing you. You're just like, oh. <gasps> What? Well, because of this, 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 and you're trying to persuade this because of this, and you're calling an alliance here. Why are you doing that? And then you you just persuade the whole group to think otherwise, and then they get the blame off of you. But because I can see through your bullshit, I'm just you like, have the CUNY bear vision. Yeah, that's why I look at you and I'm like, you. F I'm like, why, why, why did you do that? Why do you want to go against whatever? And I'm like, you are a fucking mafia. That's the part that I hate. So when I'm playing mafia, like I can go around. And I'm like. Because I, I believe, like, when I play Mafia, I kind of take advantage of the acting. And um, I, I tell myself my role is civilian right now. What would a civilian do? So I'm improving as a civilian. And it's so, I believe it so much to the point where I start hating my teammates. So, like, in the middle of it, I can look at Joe. I'm like, that motherfucker's Mafia. Or I can look at Casey. I'm like, that motherfucker's Mafia. Even when I pull out my card when it says I'm Mafia and I got killed. I'm like, what? I thought I was civilian. Like, that's how much I believe it. But... When I'm playing with you, because we have CUNY Bear Vision, I'm going out there laying out all my lies, and then I can see out of the corner of your eye, you're like... <laughs> you have like this little smirk like, I know something you do, but you don't. And I'm like, motherfucker. So I think that's what causes me to like go, 
Fuck. I mean, I am mafia. I think that's what caused me to throw my little eyebrows. I mean, I'm not eyebrows. mafia. I mean, I, I'm not ma mafia. Yeah, I could see through it. And then, like, you it's so that. hard persuading a, or, or convincing a group of people because once they're set in their own mind, they don't want to listen to anything else. And I think that's ultimately the downfall of the civilians and that's why the mafia wins because they're not really listening to anything they're just so emotionally charged so it was really cool to be killed off like i'm always killed off i'm always <laughs> killed off so i guess it was kind of cool that i was killed off like within the first couple rounds it's it's a compliment if you're killed off that means people are scared of you and threatened of you and they admire your but gameplay you're the one that kept killing me off and so to counter that, the only what that means is next time you play, you have to establish your innocence as soon as you can. Do you know what I mean? It's because you leave it up in the air where people would try to would be like, oh, okay, cool, like it's it's okay to probably kill her. But if you're it's so hard. But if you're established to be innocent, you know, people that are established like the last game that I played, Churl was established to be innocent. People are scared. Mafia is scared to kill him off because as soon as Churro dies, then it points out who the mafia are. Like, who, who would kill? But he wasn't kill? established innocent. I was established innocent. No, no, later on. He tried killing me. Towards the, no, in the beginning of the game, you were established innocent. Oh, Churro okay. was established innocent way later on. Yeah, but then what's also tricky about that in Mafia is when you're too vocal, then they're like, why? Why are you trying to deflect, you know? Yeah. Uh, and and, and you're, it's like, it's one of those where I guess you kind of have to read the room and then... You do have to read the room. So it's like sometimes you either need to back off or you need to push a little harder. So it, it's hard. Like yeah. I was trying to do a different stat strategy this time and I was trying not to be as vocal, which would give me the position of a very important role. So that's why I think I was getting killed off because they were like, oh shit, Jill must be something because she's not as like pouncy yeah the gameplay has to change according to the broom yeah but i'm honored because uh, i never want to be the person that they keep in the game because they're they're easily swayed you know that's cuny bear vision i could tell if you're lying or not no little, you can't little scumbag i'm actually really good you can't tell when i'm lying have you been cheating on me is that what you're trying to say <laughs> yes On the days that we come back to the old office to film, we're usually filming JK Party and JK News. But just walking by this prop room, it reminded me of all the days that we used to shoot JK Films. Not the current JK Films right now, but back in the day when we used to do sketch comedy. And we used to do Key and Peele type stuff, Mad TV type stuff. And there is a ton of props. So for those of you guys who are new to our channel and kind of like new to the entire JK Enterprise and you guys don't know our roots, JK Films started off as a skits, sketch, character, Key and Peele type of channel. But because um, it's so hard to write a script, shoot it and edit it on a weekly basis, we had to change our business model and kind of save all our great ideas for feature film because we realized that the shelf life for a lot of these type of videos online, on YouTube especially, it's only like a week long. You know, like after a week, another video has to go up, another video has to go up, another video has to go up. And because the shelf life is so short, some of our best ideas are kind of just put out there and they're just buried. And so because of that, we wanted to save our best ideas, our funniest moments, and, and the things that we're most proud of. We don't want it to have a shelf life for only a week. So we want to save it for a feature where it usually has a way longer shelf life. We're promoting it for an entire year. And then after the, the year, it goes on Netflix and you're promoting again. So there's a way longer shelf life. And, and great ideas like movies, they can last the test of time. Like there's cult classics that people still watch till this day. Like I think I went on Rotten Tomatoes and I saw that Wizard of Oz has 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. That's crazy. But just being in here, it kind of reminded me of all the stuff that we used to do. So we have snacks for our shoots, uh, regardless if it's JK Party or JK News. But we have toy guns. We have this broken tripod that we don't use anymore. And we have this beautifully organized but also ransacked prop section that Tiff organized a long time ago. And so we'll have like, it's it says like glasses and we'll have glasses in there. Hats, hats would be in there. Bow ties and bandanas that'll be in there. So we have all kinds of stuff from like glasses to beanies to wigs, more fake guns, medical supplies, fake medical supplies, party supplies. There's like a random lizard over there, chicken suits, hot dog suits, onesies. That's a little sheep outfit that AJ Raphael wrote in a music video we made a long time ago. A bunch of other props, production equipment. We have so many lights that are in there that we don't really use and bath tissue. We have so many lights that we don't even use anymore. 
a random uh, 8-track player that's used for props, a slider part in there, a dummy that we threw off a roof. This is an audio recorder. We have all kinds of stuff. We have so much stuff in here that was designated, not designated, but that was designated to, uh, what was that? <laughs> to filming skits and we don't do it anymore but it's very nostalgic because that's our roots and it's really cool that we're not really just forgetting about it or giving it up we are working on the movie so i'm really excited and we've been making leaps and strides on it so when that movie finally releases it's going to be the culmination of everything we've ever done from the script writing to the newfound more personal style of comedy that we know and it's going to be a combination of everything that's going to be shown in the future and i can't wait to show you guys that but i just wanted to show you guys our prop room because we're not in here very much anymore and it kind of just brought back the feels What are you gonna do right now? All right, so we are shooting the intro to the Silent Library video that we're making today. And usually we have like a, and then freeze frames on them and then I'll say like a little, uh, like little fact about them. Fun facts? Yeah. Today we're not gonna go, today we're gonna go. Superhero. Yeah. Mm. I like the blue steel you just did. Okay, let's go. All right, camera speed. And Actual. <laughs> it's hard to hold it, right? You should be the news anchor one. Or the news anchor. And actual. Come on, come on. Are you lost? <laughs> one more. Yeah. Action. Oh, this is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who are you gonna go next? Who's gonna go next? Let's see your action hero face. What the hell is going on? We're doing the. All right, you get the camera ready. All right, what? So we're doing an intro shot to the Silent Library video, and basically it's gonna be a shot of you looking to the camera. And then we're gonna freeze frame on your face and it's gonna have a little fun fact next to your face. But the face I want you to make, today we're gonna go a little different. We're gonna go superhero style. So I have to be very serious? Turn and like, yeah, kind of like... Mesmerizing. Yeah, mesmerizing, that's the word. Nice. Alright, so I start from here, then I look over my shoulder. Yep. Alright, so tell me what. And action! <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. That was it. <laughs> okay, who do we got next, Case? Uh, who's, who's close? Ah, Gina. Right here. Mm. Alright, I'm gonna sneak up on you this way, and I want you to give me your best superhero texting, and then. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, wait, I don't know if that's Okay. What? I'm on, I'm on Ambi Turner. What? So you're not like Derelict Zoolander? You can't turn both ways? Uh, well, I, was pick, I was picking this way because there's no one there now. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, no, yeah, I mean, we can do this. So I was trying to clear the areas. I know, but you just like stepped on it. Yeah, but I didn't really step on it hard. I don't know why you have to say ow. Oh. It was really hard. Well, I'm sorry then. No, no, no. You, you I'm putting my foot here because I don't want shot, people to cross yeah. the oh, no. shot because I'm going to, oh, no. that's how I block it off. I put my foot here no. to, I, I so no one walks through this crack while I film this. So everyone else has moved over here right now. Just for our superhero look. Here we go. Camera speeds. And action. I don't. I thought you were over there. <laughs> look, 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 look. Are you looking at bikinis on your cell phone? <laughs> yeah, I am. What the hell? <laughs> look towards camera. Look towards camera. Like, You're so low, though. What yeah. The yeah. Hell? Okay. Superhero. Shot. Superhero, Gina. Come on. All right, here we go. And yeah, camera. Yeah, <laughs> camera speeding. And actual. 
That was pretty. One more time. I like the eyebrow. <laughs> the people's eyebrow? Yep. And uh, action. Yeah. Awesome. Pretty cool. Hit. Same oh, thing. Here? Yeah. I, I didn't want to move people to the same spot and do it in the same spot, so I'm just going to find you and do it. Okay. Here we go. Camera speeds. On action, you turn towards me. Superhero. Very, uh, the stuff I hate. That's you know, funny. You know what I'm talking about. The like, stuff you hate? What do you hate? I hate superhero over the shoulder looks. Here oh, we go. Like Posey. Yeah. <laughs> and. I like that one. No, it's action. That's how she starts off. Are you sure you want it? Like, <laughs> it's so funny to be serious. And action. <laughs> Super mom, don't fuck with her. Dun, da, da, da. I also want to do like the, the, the news anchor yeah, yeah. pose. What shows that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. Well, Back to back, too. <laughs> Alright, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, look at Joe in all his capes. He has a fuck ton of costumes in here. <laughs> 10 seconds to spare. Alright. So, this it? is the intro shot to the Titan Library video where we usually do like the thumbs up or like something goofy and then we freeze frame in your face and we have the fun fact next right. to it. So, today we're gonna go superhero slash news anchor style where it's kind of more like prophecy, right. like on the top of the world type of vibe. You're about to tell the weather. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I'm gonna push in on you and then you're gonna turn into me as well. Like that? Yep, that was good. <laughs> Here we go, camera speed. And action. Yeah, give me a give me an eyebrow. And or a wink. And action. <laughs> nice. Jero, what happened? <laughs> Why do you have milk all over your face? I, right now, um, me and Joel had to uh, do an Eskimo kiss with a mouthful of almond milk in our mouth, and wow, we're getting tickled, so like, we're freaking so close, and then one little laughter, your mouth is so, uh, one little laughter, your mouth is so full, so he's laughing, I'm laughing, and then we just freaking project out freaking milk all over each other, and this is what happened. <laughs> oh, shit. Was it funny to Eskimo kiss with their nose with someone else? Yeah, it was freaking funny as hell. I was like, oh, this is gonna be funny. I, like, already when my nose touches, I wanted to like to really laugh and really shoot it out, but I just, I try to hold it in, but you just can't because your mouth is so full of milk. Yeah. It's like one little spill, it just goes, pro it, it just comes, comes out. out. Yeah. I was just like, damn. But I didn't think we were gonna do it four times. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be one, but whatever. It was a lot of fun. I had a great time for your JK party. <laughs> hell yeah. Hello, oh, bro. Hell yeah, that show was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's already underway, guys. But thank you for. Uh, it's okay, Michael. Sorry, the content was awesome. Yeah, that was really good. Um, look forward to people spitting on each other in the future. <laughs> That's all I can say. Right. How was it, Joe? How was it, Eskimo kissing with Churl? <laughs> it was. I, I, at one point, we were like, no, fuck this. We're men. Yeah. We're just going to do it. Yeah. And then <laughs> when I was like, let's do this shit, and we just embraced each other, and we got really close. And I felt this little nose, like, wiggling my nose. <laughs> and I, it just started making me giggle. And then we just went crazy. I just felt him going, Pwah! and I went, Pwah! Did your lips yeah. ever touch at any point? I don't even know. All I know is I could feel his, like, mouth going, Pwah! Like, oh. I could feel the spit. And that's what made me laugh. But, like, a little, Pwah! and then there's yeah, like, yeah, a little yeah, sprinkle. Yeah. yeah. Dang. <laughs> we need a shower. How was that, babe? How did you like watching Joe and Churro Eskimo awesome. kiss? So, Joe has this thing with proxemics, right? Like, yeah. he enjoys his personal space. He's not a very physical person. Yeah. Um, more so when it's another dude. He's yeah. always just like, oh, bro. Like, he likes to be, like, very bro about it. Yeah. So, when they flipped it over, and I found out that it was him and Churro, Churro is, like, very comfortable with proxemics. He, he's very, I mean, he's Latino, you know? Like, he's all about the kiss, and he's all about the affection and stuff. Yeah. So, putting these two polar opposite people, I knew it was going to be amazing. Like, if you guys watch Silent Live, you're going to see how, like, Churro just openly kisses Michael on the forehead. Like, yeah. it's beautiful. 
So I saw that and I'm like, oh my god, this is going to be great because Joe has the giggles anytime anyone's close to his face. Yeah. So they had the Eskimo kiss and I knew that those giggles were going to start happening with Joe and he was just going to blow up. And it really was beautiful because he had a mouthful. Churl was like, fuck that. Churl brings it in. So they're like, they're like this, right? And Churl brings it in so they're almost dick to dick. And they bring it in close, and as soon as their noses touch, Joe just goes, Bruh! and then Joe goes, Bruh! so it was like a clash of like two soy milks just like all over each other's faces, and it was so funny. I think I was gonna pee myself. I was laughing so hard. Yeah, they're grabbing each other like it was Brokeback Mountain. They're like, we're fucking men. We fucking got this shit. Let's Eskimo kiss. Yeah, and that shit just blew up in their face. Literally, it was fucking amazing. It was beautiful. That's awesome. And I got away scot free, so. I'm happy. So would you prefer? So I guess I'm so going. Let's say if you were a guy and then you could suck your own dick and you were jacking off, then you would have to like, like let's say you, you have it on the TV, then you have to like, <laughs> you have to look at the porn off while you're sucking. <laughs> on dick. Or you have like, like you pull the porn off on your phone. <laughs> 